the number one show I know that we all agree on. Let's break the bank with X Lurk and Dion. Welcome back to another episode of the Break the Bank podcast. Once again, X is missing in action, but we here. Let's start off with your favorite white boy, Dion. Second, let's not disrespect G. All right, I tried to catch you slipping. I tried to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> not to get disrespect. I would have, I would have, I would have sent this to G as soon as we finished recording. If you would have fell for my trap, but not even. Let's start with your second favorite white boy, Jake Paul. You predicted an ass whooping. And, I mean, Nate tried to put up a fight, but for the most part, that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, I mean, I think Jake Paul's in this weird spot. I mean, I've been saying this the whole time, but, like, I think now we're, like, officially there. Like, there's no, like, no one can deny this. He's in this weird spot where he... Ain't no more MMA fighters I'm trying to watch him fight against. You could probably sell me on Connor just because, like, Connor's so funny. I'd probably watch, I'd probably pay to watch Connor fight, like, X. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> that's, but, like, in terms of quality of a fight, like, I think Jake would starch him too. You know what I mean? Like, he's too good for MMA guys. Uh, but he ain't good enough yet for, like, like, he's good enough for pro boxers, as we saw with Tommy Fury, right? Like, there's no denying that. But there is no one with a similar skill set to Tommy Fury that also has the draw that Tommy Fury has, right? So there's, like, he's not going to fight Badu Jack. You know what I mean? Like, that's just never going to happen. Like, could he theoretically? Yes. He should. He should. I mean, I, boxing fans would enjoy it. But, like, if you go on YouTube right now, his fight against Nate Diaz at uh, – the zone doesn't whatever the fuck how are you supposed to pronounce it already has 7.4 million views you know what i mean like if he fights badu jack seven hundred forty thousand views. <laughs> you know what i mean like don't nobody care and and that's the problem like i i obviously uh i guess they're probably gonna fight in mma it sounds like um and then he's gonna fight tommy fury at some point he's probably gonna fight ksi at some point but other than that who the fuck is there for him to fight? So I feel like uh, we're kind of getting towards the end of this. I feel where you're coming from, but if he take boxing as half as serious as he says he does, right? Which you see in his fighting, like he's shown improvement in, from the first fight to like every single fight up until now, he's shown improvement. I thought he, he put on a pretty good show this past weekend, but it's time for him to start fighting no name pro boxers. Uh, the problem take is a similar path. Take a similar path as everybody else in the boxing um realm. I, the, I understand what you're saying. The problem is he's a big draw. He's not gonna fight nobody that's not gonna bring in money, right? Well, it's not just him. You know what I mean? Like ESPN ain't gonna ain't gonna want that. Showtime ain't gonna want that. The D- zone ain't gonna. I I understand what you're saying, but the only way to really, like, prove himself is to fight real boxers. No, I agree. And you don't want to start with a big name fighter off rip. Like, don't get it twisted. He whooped Nate Diaz, but he also took a ton of punches, though. Like, he also yeah. took a ton of punches. Nate Diaz is like 40 years old, and he was gassed. Like after like the fourth round, he was gassed, and he was still hitting Jake with some shit. Jake took a lot of punches. He took a lot of hits in the Tommy Fury fight. Now, granted, that tells me he could take a punch, but you're taking too many punches and you're going up against guys that ain't seasoned. You don't want to go up against the seasoned guy right now, even though it's going to bring in bread. But you can't keep fighting these social media guys and retired athletes and over-the-hill MMA guys. You're too good. That's why I think it's cooked. Like, we, we had fun. You know, like, <laughs> we're going to get him fighting Nate in MMA. We're going to get, um, <clears throat> we'll definitely get the Tommy Fury rematch. We'll probably get a trilogy of that because I think he starts his Tommy in the rematch. Um, but I think next year is probably it. You get Nate towards the end of the year, or maybe you get Tommy towards the end of the year, and then you probably get two or three fights, uh, 2024. And then I think that's it because. 
it makes no sense for him to do it. It makes no sense for promoters to promote it. And then let's be very, 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 very real about something here. And if for a fighter that has the same amount of pro fights as him, they're not going 10 rounds. They're going to go four. So it almost makes no sense for, other than to cash a check, it almost makes no sense for the other fighter to do it too. So what I really think needs to happen is go do the MMA thing, do the trilogy with Tommy, fight KSI, maybe, I don't know, fuck it, fight your brother. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, but what he needs is he needs someone to come along. Another Tommy Fury. He needs people like that. Like, Because if he can string along, if he can beat Tommy twice, and let's say he beats another pro boxer too with a similar skill set to him and Tommy or maybe slightly better because by then he'll have grown a little bit. You could sell me on a world championship fight and then that would definitely be the end of it. You he's know what I mean? Fighting, that you, that would definitely be the end. Title. He's not fighting for a real title. Well... He could, he'll end up fighting for a made-up world championship. I mean, Badu Jack's the WBO champ. You just said he'd watch him fight Badu. But is he winning? Do I think he beats Badu right now? No. In a year or two, maybe. That's my point. Year two, Badu probably won't be champ. Well, maybe not. But my point is he needs to wait. He needs not to here. grow. He needs other people to come along. And I'm not saying he wins the world championship, but when he gets that fight, win or lose... It's over, right? Like there's nothing else yeah. left. Facts. That's fact. Can we just talk about his left hook though? That boy left hook is nasty. Hey, bro, he 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 legitimately like he has a ton of skills. Like he's extremely athletic, but he's just young. Like he, a is a young human being in general. He's what like 23, 24, I think they said he was wow. like mad. He's mad young. I know that. Um. And he's only been doing this shit for three years. So it's like, the dude do got mad skills, though. Like, yeah, three years into box, who, who's fucking with him three years into their career? Not many. Me. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, listen, if you were, you wouldn't be drinking White Claws on a Monday night. I wouldn't be talking to you on a Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I mean, we're talking, like, eight, eight fights in. Three years in, I've been saying it every time he fights and we get up here and we talk about it, ain't a, ain't nobody that has a resume like his. You're right, but at the end of the day, he ain't a pro fighter. He hasn't fought in any pro fighters like other than retired or over-the-hill MMA guys. I genuinely think, and Tommy can say the same thing because I feel this way about Jake. Tommy and Jake are better than anybody these dudes fight in their first 20 fights. I don't know about all that, bro. But half the dudes Floyd fought, his first 30 fights were working with you during the day. <laughs> Yo, that don't mean they ain't deserve that fight, though. <laughs> they didn't. They was fighting for something. <laughs> They just found that dude. They're like, yo, you're going to lose. They might have been <laughs> fighting for some new Tims, but they was fighting for they something. Just say, yo, you're about to get stalled out. Protect yourself at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, another fight that happened over the weekend. This one was un unsanctioned. Jose Ramirez, Tim Anderson get into a little scuffle that results in Tim Anderson getting knocked out right next to second base. Little fake team brawl ensues after that. But the funniest part about all this is that Tim Anderson got suspended the most games by the MLB. It might be because he pushed the umpire before they started throwing hands. I'm not sure. He also is the one that like kind of instigated it. But either way, the fact that you're the only person that got knocked out and then you get suspended for the most games... It's is like salt in the wound, bro. It's like a double punishment. Yeah, that's Two crazy. hands got knocked out in the middle of the field in front of thousands of fans, in front of your teammates. And then you get suspended six games while everybody else got three or one. It's crazy. It's crazy. That shit was hilarious, though. Did you see it? Yeah, bro. He just got hit in the perfect spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of those where... Perfect spot, perfect timing. 
And he just, yo, he dropped like a sack of potatoes. It was like watching a regular boxing match. But he just got me of when Diaz got dropped in the fifth round. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Diaz got his ass. <laughs> like, but like, the bro. way they, the way that they dropped, it was like they had absolutely yeah. no control over a single muscle in their body for that moment. No, he got hit in the, the like, perfect spot. Like, clean. You know, and Jose Ramirez didn't know what yeah. he was doing. He was just swinging. Yeah, he's away. A, he like the he was swinging wild. He came. Yeah, up yeah, no, I know. Hit. Shout out to Tim Anderson, but look at that punch though. That's clean. It's look, crazy. Like, look, I mean, like, look at where it's about to land. It's about to land like right here. It's crazy. He got he got him in perfect spot. There's just no other way to put it. <laughs> I feel bad for bro because like when they squared up and they first started throwing punches, like if they was really boxing, like if they weren't just like throwing random, like Tim Anderson stalls that dude out. <laughs> I don't know. He threw his first punch and it looked like he never been in a fight day in his life either. I mean, probably not, but he looked way more like Jose Ramirez was just swinging away. Just swinging yeah. away. And, and one landed clean. clean as he fun. was fighting like Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Now, nah, listen, what, what he did was perfect. Uh, It worked. That shit was clean. But I kind of feel for Tim Anderson because uh, bro's a meme now and that shit was pure luck. <laughs> That shit was hilarious. And then he went on Twitter talking mad shit. And yeah, that was crazy. And then he ends it with, y'all got me fucked up, for real, for real. Nah, you got fucked up, for real, for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he probably shouldn't have tweeted through it, but, like, bro got CTE now, so who knows what's going on. It's that's... like, <laughs> just is what it is. <laughs> probably shouldn't joke about CTE that much, but that was that was a good one. I mean, bro, that's exactly how you get CTs. Yo, that, was, that, was, that was perfect timing, just like that punch from Ramirez. That was a lot Another shit. Did you see, you know how people be getting the custom um jerseys and shit? Mm -hmm. Did you see the dude that got the custom Ramirez jersey? And it, nah. said, and, and it says, down goes Anderson. <laughs> nah, that's crazy. I see why he was so mad. <laughs> I see why. How do you so get mad. that done that fast, though? <laughs> Probably got it from the team store. Yo, that shit had me cry when I saw that shit earlier. It said, down goes Anderson. <laughs> and all I thought about was him just, yo, he folded his body just like this and he just dropped back. Elite comedy. It, it, listen, it was tough. Uh, I mean, bro just got hit in the perfect spot. <laughs> yeah, talking about taking tough L's. Your favorite girl in the... In the music industry, Lizzo. Yeah, I don't fuck her. She got hit with a lawsuit recently. Her and a couple entities that she's affiliated with got hit with a lawsuit by a few of her backup dancers. One of the things that she's being accused of, well, the main thing is she's being accused of um, having a hostile work environment, right? One of the people accused her of making jokes about her making comments about her weight and insinuating that she gained too much weight yeah how you feel about lizzo fat shaming her backup dancers i'm on her side with this so like <laughs> here's the thing here's the thing lizzo's self-aware she big she gonna get tired her backup dancers gotta be in shape bro because lizzo not just gonna be up there dancing for hours bro she not taylor swift she not 60 pounds that's just self-awareness i'm on her side I get what you say when she's big, but like, yo, bro, like, how you say there fat shaming your employees when you a sumo wrestler in a swimsuit? Like, that's crazy. She talented. Like, it's just it's <laughs> talented. She talented. She belongs. Like, I just, I mean, I think, I think in life, everyone has to realize the rules don't, the same rules don't apply to everybody. You know what I mean? She's the talent. Is she telling you yo ass going to dance? Through these next 20 songs, yo ass better be in shape to dance through the next 20 songs. And if you not. Yo, this is a this is another wild accusation that was made. She allegedly made her backup dances, or at least some of them. Eat bananas placed in a new dancer's genitals. 
I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just like, like, I know it sounded like I was going somewhere with that, but it's just like, yo, like what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like that scene is like that scene from Pineapple Express, and it's like, remember when you ate that box of nerds at the stripper's ass? Like, yeah, yo, I mean that you... part. I ain't on her side with everything. Let me put it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying, like, if you agree to be her backup dancer, and she outlined the conditions into which those were done prior, you cannot then be upset if she told you not to be fat and you fat. I mean, it is, bro. what are your thoughts about her forcing the people to eat bananas out of their genitals? Yeah, listen, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I it's foul think- that she did that. I don't mean to laugh. It's just like, what the fuck is going through your head to even like to want to do that, let alone make somebody else do it? Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy like power control thing. Uh, which unfortunately all these celebrities tend to have. <laughs> it's like when the, the you know, uh, what they say Odell does, he gets like shit on by a woman. Like that's, or pissed, like, yeah, or no, he shits on women, maybe? One and two. Odell be doing something with shit. That's all I know. <laughs> but it's just, what, it's just power control. That's all it is. It's to, it's a, <clears throat> They're just trying to satisfy their own egos. Yo, that's some weird shit though. Like, like that's that. Yo, you need help, bro. If that's the banana true, thing, like, you really, huh? The banana thing. I mean, the shit with Odell too is crazy, literally, yeah, shit, figuratively. Crazy. Like that's wild. Well, the banana thing was probably her trying to help their diet out. I mean, I don't. Oh, so you tying that into the weight loss? Uh, I, I would crazy. almost guarantee you that there's probably some sort of like, um, like combination of the two. The only thing is, is like, the additional part is her just, just being like trying to be way too like a uh, egotistical power control type shit. But the banana probably it listen. It's probably not a coincidence. She was calling folks fat, and then it was a banana, and not a burger. I mean, to force somebody to eat anything out of what is being yeah. described as genitals is crazy. It's crazy. You see, they she rapped that. about this months ago. Nah, I didn't. I don't. I don't listen to her music. I don't either. I just saw this on Twitter, but because like you, you know, like when <clears throat> when the people like post like some shit happened, I seen it happen. I'm like, oh, the replies and quotes are gonna be hilarious. Mm-hmm. And someone's so from a song she had with Cardi B called Rumors. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know when this song came out. I just said months ago. That was a complete lie. <laughs> that was a complete lie. <laughs> I, got no, I got no idea when this song came out. But she said, had to cut some hoes loose. NDA, no, no loose lips. Now the post tried to sue me. Bitch, I don't give two shits. Oh, man. That shit's hard, though. <laughs> so she was foreshadowing. She was foreshadowing. That was, listen, she knew they was gonna sue. <laughs> so let's talk about the Argentinian god for a second. Messi. Now, listen, I saw on Kicking It with the Brothers. <laughs> that was racist. That was racist. Because I said it with the ER. <laughs> that was racist. That was racist. The emphasis on the ER was crazy. I did it on purpose, though, because it's, it, it's hilarious. Kicking it with the brothers. I saw y'all was talking about um Messi, like, making soccer more popular in, in the United States. Right? But now I'm paying attention to Messi and what he's doing these few games since he's come over here. And what I'm really thinking is not if he's making it more popular, but is he exposing how bad the American soccer product really is? Like, he's 36 years old, 38 years old, something like that. Seven goals in four games. The man has 16 games all of the the entire League of One season. And he's already got seven, over there. 16. 
the whole. Oh, he, oh, I thought you said he had sixteen games. Uh, no, sixteen you. goals. Yeah, sixteen goals in like thirty six or thirty eight games, in, um, last season for PSG. He's already got seven goals in four games. Three straight games with at least two plus goals. All right. Is he exposing how bad the MLS is, or is he really just that guy? I think he's exposing Still. how bad it is. Uh, I also don't. I disagree with the notion people are saying that he's making the game more popular. Um, I think only time will tell on that. When Beckham came, when Ibrahimovic came, like we did this same charade. I think the charade will last longer because it's messy, but it ends eventually every single time. I think it would be a good business move for these dudes, like, outside of Messi, because, you know, he could have made way more bread playing for the Saudis. But guys like the two you just mentioned and Messi, like, these are dudes that wait till they madly in their career, way over the hill. Yeah. But you're going to get paid mad bread to come over here and try to help increase the popularity of the league, right? And then you got your potential endorsement deals because you're in America. You're tapping into a whole other market. You're not in Europe no more. But they really not who they once were. Nowhere close to I mean, Beckham wowed out while he was over here. But right, it's just dudes that's washed up coming over here real quick. And no disrespect to Messi, but like again, like you're nowhere close to your prime. You're not the producer you once were. Still a great player, but. This is America. You can't bring a guy that everybody already knows because of the World Cup and international soccer, right? This is the home of the immigrants. Like, everybody knows who, who Messi is. But speaking of immigrants, I'm going to let you finish. But I'm watching Puerto Rico, U.S. But anybody that don't think every black dude is Puerto Rican needs to turn this game on, bro. <laughs> 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 the Puerto Rican national team is just the black dudes that could have made the AUS team. Bro. Yo, this dude is stupid. <laughs> dude is stupid. But I mean, I already knew we all black, bro. Because Puerto Rico, like all them islands, with they, you know, they was the one that got the ones that got away off the boats and whatnot. <laughs> but this God, game okay. is just proving that to be a fact. Like this is crazy. <laughs> I don't know if they got away, but. That's a conversation for a conversation for a different podcast. Yeah. Some got away, some didn't. Yeah. yeah but um what was I saying? You Philip, can't, we, you can't... Philip Wheeler. Philip Wheeler. That's a Puerto Rican Philip Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean cat play for cat play for the Dominican team. Who? Cat trying to play for the Dominican team, right? Yeah. That don't help. That all that do is help my point. <laughs> <laughs> that that's why I said it. You tell me, Philip Wheeler didn't. Yeah, Al Horford, Al Horford, Dominican team. Yeah. He look a little bit closer though. A little bit closer is crazy. But More than all... this, Philip, this Philip Wheeler dude looked like he grew up in Chicago. <laughs> he probably did. I, well, I, yeah. Down me, down me, he's not Puerto Rican, though. I might need to go get me a little Puerto Rican citizenship. Bro, what? Hmm. You already have Puerto Rican citizenship. Oh, they're the American territory or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they still trying to pretend to do that? Yeah, yeah, I still trying to pretend you're not part of Mexico. Who? Yeah, in Cali. You talking to the wrong person. Oh, so you you acknowledge that yeah? I'll be of lucha libre up. <laughs> lucha libre up is crazy. <laughs> Shout so out you, Syria. You are short enough to be a luchador. <laughs> I'll, I'll be down. That should look fun. <laughs> Cruiserweight cruise title in the head ass. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember what we was talking about before this. Uh, now nah, we could just end it right here. This is a oh, you was talking about um. Immigrants and some shit, I don't know. Ah, yeah. You can't use a guy like Messi. 
to oh, yeah, yeah. boost the popularity in the United States when everybody already knows who Messi is because this is the land, like this is the home of the immigrants. Like everybody migrates here, bro. Every and the, if you wasn't born here, you probably would watch soccer. Who me? No, I'm saying in general, like if you weren't born in America, it's very likely that you watch soccer. Oh yeah. yeah. Nobody cares about the MLS here because there's other stores that, sports that has been played in in this country for longer and is way more popular. You can't bring a washed up Messi, no disrespect, to try to boost the popularity of the league. I still don't understand how they're supposed to make um pay this man his contract when the team when they paying him more than what the team is probably worth. Well, so here's the thing: it's all like incentive based like i'm gonna keep it a buck if you told me messi only walks with like 50 m's for this season like that wouldn't surprise me because it's all incentive based if it's apple tv subscriptions which is 4.99 so like you're gonna need a hell of a lot of those to make a lot of money uh adidas sales which having a percentage of that probably is a good thing right like that don't seem too bad and then it's his contract, which I don't even know how the much. The data sales in general or just like his stuff? I think it's within like soccer in America or something like that. And X was saying, and this, this is how you know X just be talking. He was saying the Apple TV thing is, is predominantly international sales. Who the fuck is watching Messi play at three in the morning somewhere? Americans ain't even watching him play at five. <laughs> like, Right, like, that's my thing. Like, uh, the problem that American soccer is gonna have is they want to change the way the games play, right? Like, they want to change. Like, if you look, like the MLS is playing right now, right? The Premier League and them don't even start for another month, so they're on a completely different calendar. You know what I mean? They're trying to change the way the games played. Versus, like, take the Saudi Arabian League that's getting a million players, right? Like, they lost Messi and signed 50 other dudes. Yeah. Uh, they're not trying to wait. They, they don't want to change the way the game's played. They want to change the way you view it. If America was willing to do everything they do in Europe, whether that's relegation, in-season tournaments, homegrown clubs, change the schedule to be more around the international games, because if you're... If you're Mbappe, for example, right, and you're gonna play for France in 2026, are you? You're not gonna play in the MLS when, where uh, you're gonna be playing regular season games when you should be with your international team, right? Like they don't, they, the the schedule coincides with all the inter, the major major international tournaments. Like the Euros are next year. Anyone that's European wouldn't be able to play in those because they're playing MLS games, or they'd have to get permission from their team. Which, to be fair, Mbappe would most likely get. But you're not just going to leave your club for three months. You know what I mean? So it, they need to they need to con, concede to some of the stuff Europe does and just change the way they view it. Play, you think players wouldn't love to play in Miami? You know what I mean? Like players would love that. But the real the realistic part of it is you're not going to do that in your prime because it's going to change the way it's going to change your complete goals in your career versus going to Saudi Arabia. It don't really change much, uh, especially if the league continues to grow. So I think that's what I think that's going to be America's biggest problem. And at the end of the day, all this MLS shit is always cute until football and basketball start. And then no one gives a shit. It's this same thing that happened. I don't think people give a shit even much like no. domestically. Most people don't give a shit anyway. Like, no, it's already lost its lure. Like the first game. Twitter was blown or X was blowing up about it. <laughs> you know, um, I watched the game last night. I don't think anyone was watching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I might have been one of the ten people watching. I'm dead. <clears throat> you talking about the Miami game? Yeah, against FC Dallas. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I was scrolling Twitter while I was watching the game, and it wasn't like the same way scrolling Twitter like the first game or the second yeah. game. It, the it's was, slowly gonna lose interest. The show was hilarious because Messi scored a goal, and the announcer talking about, "Look at the crowd. This is how it's always gonna be when they play." Blah blah. It wasn't that many people in the stands though. But they played. 
respectfully, this is another thing that MLS has an issue with. They played a game in Dallas at 8.30 p.m. on a Sunday night. The fuck? <laughs> Who the fuck is going to that? <laughs> they got some poor decision makers over there. Yeah, they, they need to completely redo everything they do, man. Like, like you can't. I was saying, I, I feel this way too. Austin Reeves just put on a nasty move. <laughs> it, listen, that boy Philip Wheeler really might be Puerto Rican after this game. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> but uh, what you can't do is you can't manufacture like love for something. It, you either got it or you don't. Like you can't fake it. You know what I mean? And um, it can grow for sure. You can grow into loving something, but there's something special about what Europe, uh, like what Europe feels for soccer or football uh, that mm -hmm. as Americans, we're never going to feel. And to be completely honest, we don't feel that way about any sport in this country or any person. And At I, one point, I, it was baseball. Maybe. I use boxing as a prime example for the difference between international sports and American sports. And that's not to say like international sports are more successful because ultimately that's a complete lie. But when Floyd would box a, like a Mexican or like a like Pacquiao or something, like bro, the whole country show up. We was showing up to watch Floyd lose. <laughs> that's the difference. I mean, I wasn't, I was a Floyd fan. But Floyd was successful because people wanted to watch him lose. In Europe and these other countries, these Manny Pacquiao is successful because there's a whole country behind him that wanted to watch him succeed. We don't feel that way about anybody, any team, any sport in this country. So with Messi, they just advanced to the quarterfinals. They plus 1,200 right now to win the MLS. You taking that bet? So they, they advanced to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. I don't know what the fuck that is, to be honest. But they're still in dead lap. You know, so he's never played an MLS game, technically. <laughs> so the whole breath. The the MLS is the stupidest shit in the world. The whole fucking uh, the league stops for like two months to play this stupid-ass cup. <laughs> Messi not going to play an MLS game until like September. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Uh I don't know. I don't think I don't think the team's that good. I'm gonna be honest. Is he even with to, even is, with Messi. He's not enough. Uh no. I mean he was getting dogged yesterday until the little comeback at the end. Yeah, so I mean they play a Spanish brand of soccer, obviously. You got Busquets, Alba, Messi coming from Barcelona. That's how you're going to play. The coach used to coach at Barcelona, I want to say. Uh, they don't got the talent outside of those three to run that system. <laughs> so they press, they push everybody forward, and then they get countered immediately. The other, the other team scored like four goals. <laughs> yeah, they was up like 4-2. Yeah, they were up 2-1 at halftime. I'm going to be honest, like, I also think <clears throat> our, like, interest in this is waning i would say that's pretty clear messi's interest is waning too like bro he was pissed him and him and jordi alba got multiple people subbed off yesterday but they were late coming out of halftime <laughs> the the bench uh came out the coaching staff came out training staff came out messi alba busquets and the rest of the starting 11 came out like five minutes later like they're starting to get frustrated and i think the talent ain't gonna change. The team is going to continue to stink. So the more, like, the more frustrated they get, I think they're. I, I just think they're gonna wind up losing. Yeah. So you're not taking that better plus twelve hundred. Hell no. Nah. I think it's more likely Messi just stops playing <laughs> and loan me to Barcelona in January. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> This guy is uh, a real Argentinian, though. 
there's a lot of soccer players that don't play for their home country. So shout out to my guy for actually doing that. And no disrespect to the Argentinians. It's crazy my guy isn't safe in his home country. <laughs> like, that shit's crazy. Are you talking about when they shot up his family store? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Bro, if they willing to do that to Messi, what would they do to us? But I don't want to get Jamie Foxx. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the Break the Bank podcast. <laughs> Hopefully, X is back next week so we can continue with our NFL player rankings. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 